people always ask me what I think about GMOs, and um, I would say I try my best to avoid them, and I do that for three reasons. One is that whatever is said over and over and over, their safety for human consumption as in all of our processed food, all of, all of our processed food, right, uh, has not been proven. And despite what everybody said, long-term tests have not been done. And when they've been done and there has been a rat study, at least there's more than that. There's, there's one rat study by a guy named Seralini in France. He's crucified. And they, they pressure the journal. They withdraw the article. You, you have no, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the pressure that's put on people who get any negative results. So it is not a career into which young people would go looking at the safety of GMOs. So there isn't enough information about safety. The other thing is, I think, that the way in which it's grown, that since most of it is herbicide-resistant corn and soy, that's what much of our acreage is covered with, we're spraying the whole world with glyphosate, and now with something worse that they've gotten approved. And, and that's doing terrible things to the soil ecology, to, to the, the whole way the world grows its food. The whole, the whole system is being crapped up by being sprayed with this poison. And the third reason I'm against them is because I'm a seeker after truth. And I seriously resent the extent to which truth about GMOs is suppressed, actively suppressed. About the earlier this year, I went to see a movie called um, Merchants of Doubt. And it was based on a much earlier book that had focused on tobacco and the effort that was made that got revealed in all the trials finally about tobacco to discount, to create doubt about the harm from tobacco. And they were incredibly effective for years and years and years in just creating enough doubt that the regulators didn't take action. That's all they were trying to do. And the same thing is true now. The movie shows that the very same people, the very same firms, the very same individuals who were doing that with tobacco are now doing it with global warming. And just this week, a story appeared in the New York Times about the effort to get recruit professors from universities uh, to speak out in behalf of GMOs to create this kind of perpetual confusion which we have every time a study comes out, as I said earlier, that shows anything negative about GMOs, the person's career is ruined. I mean, basically, the first major report of damage was from a guy named Putzai, who was a very distinguished, retired English researcher. He was at the Rowett Institute, and he was asked to go on television. He did a study with, with rats and potatoes, GMO potatoes, and he did a meticulous study. And when it was came, and he assumed there'd be no difference. He had some of the rats fed ordinary potatoes, some fed potatoes that were made GMO resistant, and the third group fed potatoes, and then the toxin that he had engineered in, in the third group, in a separate dish. And he thought there'd be no difference, and there were major differences. And it turned out that the GMO potato, the one that had was engineered, was the most damaging. And he went on te British television, because he was asked to, to report on it, and his career was destroyed. I mean, his... Research was locked up, his laboratory was locked, he was fired, he was told if he talked to the press he'd not get his retirement. I mean, so it's not, it's not child's play. It's serious. If you want to oppose biotech, you better be retired and pretty well off financially. I don't know whether you need to have a bodyguard or not, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, so the New York Times uh, told the story about all these, these emails that had been revealed with all these things going on between universities and professors and all these people that were being paid or being supported or being going around talking about GMOs and their advantages and how they create increased production, which they don't. And I mean, just, and very often the professors were not professors who were, who were expert in toxicology or anything like that. They might be molecular biologists. and. And, but then the Times, in order to show balance, said that the organic industry also hired people. And uh, now the organic industry is 4% of the food industry. And so they put on the page, the major page the story ran on, two large photographs 
One of this guy, who who's shown to have done all kinds of things on behalf of Jim Rose, and the other of the one person who is the scientist who, who has taken on the job of trying to take the other side. And he was at George Washington University, at Washington State, I guess, Washington State. And it's like, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the industry spending millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in this campaign. They've recruited all kinds of writers. They bring them to headquarters. They brought Bill Nye, the science guy, to, to Monsanto to kind of have everyone explain to him so he would change his mind. I mean, the amount of energy they're putting in to obscuring the real question. And the real question, and that's the other thing, the real question about GMOs is not whether GMOs, qua GMOs, the germplasm of corn with something inserted into it is dangerous. I don't think that's clear, but I don't think that's the question. The question is, when you grow GMOs, that are genetically engineered to withstand herbicides, you're spraying half the United States with herbicides all the time. High doses, and they got the, they got the EPA to allow, allow higher doses, to allow a higher residue so they could spray extra amounts. So it's like, those are not the questions that are being asked because people are being diverted to looking at the wrong question. Just like right at the moment, people are diverted to looking at the question of cancer from different substances, when the real question about the toxicants in our food has to do with birth defects and their, their, their hormonal influences, which are huge. So we are often diverted to asking the wrong question. So, um, so let me see, what did I say? Oh, I guess the last thing to say is, what can a consumer do about all this? Because I will tell you, if you try to find out the truth about GMOs by going online, and it's researching and researching and researching. I mean, I teach a course in which we do one session on biotech, and I can't tell from year to year what to believe. It is so difficult to know what the truth is, except the truth. You can be pretty sure that if the corporations are trying so hard to keep the truth out of our hands, then the truth is not necessarily positive. So what you can do is you can avoid eating processed foods, because there are no, so far as I know, there may be one or two, but there's almost no GMO fruit or vegetable that we get in our market, except maybe papayas, which have been genetically engineered to resist rim spot disease, and I don't think there's any problem with that. They're not being sprayed all the time with stuff. So you don't you don't even have to buy organic fruits and vegetables, though I would advise it, but you cert but avoid processed foods because all the processed foods have GMO materials in them. Because I, I, the statistic I, I, I just looked up the statistic this morning, eighty eight percent of corn and 94% of soybeans are genetically engineered. So that means, you know, anything you get in the store, any derivative of corn, and go look up what the derivative of corn are, you won't believe how much <coughs> corn starch, corn, you know, high fructose corn syrup, all, everything has corn in it. So don't eat processed foods. And, uh, and grow your own. <laughs> or get your produce from the crops and community farm which doesn't use any GMOs or pesticides.